Tonight on Hotel Hell, imagine if a teenage boy designed a hotel. It would look like a Ferrari. There's a lot of red. There'd be a chocolate pizza on the menu. <laughs> it's like someone's wiped their ass with my dough. And there'd be hot waitresses with super short skirts. Well, this is the Keating Hotel. Looks like a nightclub out there with those ropes. It might seem like a teenager's <laughs> dream, but it's actually the twisted vision of a grown man. And for the staff who work here... I'm at the end of my room. I have my day's number here. It's a living hell. Jesus Christ. Call 911. Urgently. San Diego, California, is one of the top five vacation destinations in the US and is home to the Keating Hotel, which lies in the heart of the city's buzzing gas lamp quarter. Want to say the desk? This is Christos. How may we have service? The hotel is the brainchild of local property developer Eddie Kane. Everything about the place is just the way he likes it. The Keating was my vision. I was at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars, and it kind of just hit me. Why not have the Ferrari of hotels? But this 35-room boutique hotel is far from living up to guest expectations. Oh, my gosh. Eddie pitches this as the Ferrari of hotels, but... It feels like a hospital, sterile, almost. This is all style and no substance. I feel like it's a jail. Like, I don't want to take my shoes off, ever. This is uh, not exactly luxury. Eddie hired a sports car design company and sank millions into the interior design, but he spent peanuts on things the hotel really needs. Let's not use this machine for the sheets because it has rust in the back. Making life a misery for his guests and his staff. I have zero resources. Pretty much everything there is to do here, I do it. How glamorous is this? It's a hell operations here, to be honest. Eddie's constantly adding ideas he's seen elsewhere, but that's hurting the hotel and the restaurant. I believe our menu is a fucking joke. It's like four pages long, which are all favorites of Eddie's, but we're not feeding a fucking million different Eddie's. We're feeding different people. At the end of the day, I am the owner, right? If there's something I want on the menu, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, I think I pissed them off. <laughs> Eddie will come in and say, I want a chicken parm slider on the menu. I had one in New York, and I say yes. I have stopped being proud of my food. The hotel is millions of dollars in debt and struggling to fill the rooms. So I have my work cut out for me if I'm going to get this place back on track. We're losing a lot of money. It's a nightmare. But you should be able to handle that. Eddie knows he's losing money. I just don't think he knows how to fix it. I don't have any hope that things will get better if anything works around here, it's because of pure dumb luck. There it is. The Keating. Wow. Looks nice on the outside. Beautiful. Jesus, isn't that a dog outside? Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Is that a model dog or is he real? No, she's real. What's her name? Smudge. Smudge. My god. She's ugly. Looks like a nightclub out there with those ropes. How are you? Yeah, uh, hello, how are you? Good to see you. There's a lot of red. Wow. And I'm Christos. Christos, nice good to, to see you. And um, what do you do here? Lifestyle concierge down here at the front desk. You're going to be advising me for my life, or are you going to be... You need dinner reservations? So you organize everything? Anything you need. Oh. Now, somebody likes red. Is that smudge that likes red, or...? No, it's both the designer and the owner. Wow, wow, wow. Enjoy your stay. Right, up the What floor are we on? We're on the second floor. Second floor, please. Perfect. Thank you. Right here, I like to always stop at the car. Each floor is a different model car. Who's obsessed with the supercars? Who is that? The owner. Everybody. So right here, this is your room. Wow. Yes. It's so empty. More like a garage than a guest room. And how much is this a night? $759. $759? Wow. That's incredibly expensive. And what's that thing there? That is actually the jacuzzi tub. In the middle of the lounge? It is in the middle of the lounge. Wow. When they designed the rooms, they took away all the interior walls. But without sounding stupid, these are car designers. Correct, they and are car designers. Now they're putting jacuzzis in the middle of suites. Last time I checked, a living room was for sitting in, not taking a bath. <laughs> Jeez, 
How much do these things cost? The jacuzzi tub itself yeah. is about $20,000. If you don't take bath in cars, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is crazy. But who wanted all these specially designed That is the owner. Areas. That's Eddie. That's Eddie. Yes. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> oh, shit. The sports car inspired furniture looks cheap and isn't even functional. It's different than anything else. Yeah. Um, different from a nice hotel room. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. Um, who on earth would want to sit here and sort of <laughs> watch the television? And watch the television. <laughs> it works though. The sheets. How can they all so wrinkled when I haven't even slept in there? Why is that? We do them in house. When you say we, what do you mean? You don't do laundry. Lifestyle means everything. Your mouthwash. <laughs> like gas. Socket's all broken and smashed down there. And someone's left their dirty ones there. The plastic plants. That's outrageous. $800. Oh, my gosh. Gordon doesn't like anything about the hotel. Damn it. Anything else? If I have any lifestyle needs, I'll call. Thank you. Of course. So far, I'm not impressed with the Keating's pretentious and uncomfortable design. But maybe it can redeem itself with the one thing every luxury hotel should have. Impeccable room service. I'm starving. Come on, General the desk. This is Christos. How many of you have Hi, Christos. This is Gordon. What's a little bit bizarre for me is that I'm ordering room service at the front desk. Is it, there's no direct line down to the kitchen? There is no direct line down to the kitchen. The communication between departments isn't really there. So we um, take care of everything and make sure it, it happens. Listen, I'm starving. Um, I'll have a tomato soup, please. And then pizza, um, a barbecue chicken. I'm fascinated to see the chicken parmesan sliders. I'll have one of those. So I'll have that as soon as I can. Brilliant. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello, how are, how are you? you? Thank you. My pleasure. Wow. Well, is this how it's normally served? Yes. In a to-go box? Yes. You pay $800 a night to stay here, and you've got to eat your food out of boxes and plastic containers. Are we short of soup? Because it's not even half full. That's how they serve it. That's how they that, that much? Yes. Wow. It's one cup. It's like a retirement home. Is that luxury, do you think? No, not at all. What would you rather do? Sip that out of a cup? Of course. Jeez, we, we, we barely got half a cup. Um, anyway, I'm gonna dig in. If there's anything else I can do for you, just go ahead and let us okay. know, okay? Brilliant. Mmm. Darling? I'm sorry. Mm. You can say that now. <laughs> it's finished. Thank you. My pleasure. A chicken parmesan slider. That's dreadful. Now I know why they got the boxes. It's a takeaway puke box. Pizza, unappetizing in a box, especially when you're spending $800 a night. This place is obsessed with design, but serves room service in plastic containers. No wonder they can't fill the rooms. That is not my idea of luxury, let me tell you. That's embarrassing. Wow. How can this place call itself a luxury hotel? I need to get some answers from Eddie, the Keating's owner and visionary. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good hey, to hey. see you. This place has been your baby in many ways, and uh, I'm dying to find out the vision, the insight, and to why. Give us a little tour. I bought the building back in 2000. It was around six million. Did you go to hotel school? No. You've never run a business before? Not a hotel business, no. Wow. Yeah. So I was actually at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars and stuff, and it kind of hit me, why not the Ferrari of hotels? I'm more concerned what you were smoking at the time than what you were thinking. Why would you take one of the most high-spec cars anywhere in the world and turn it into a hotel? I don't know where he's coming from, but it does piss me off. I designed the Keating to be the perfect hotel for me, not for him. Where should I start? The floor. It's all scuffed and marked. When you have a resin floor, it needs to be updated. I mean, everything's just marked to hell. It feels cheap. Um, the sheets. You can't call yourself a luxury hotel if you don't have beautifully pressed sheets. OK. What's the idea behind sitting here? So when you have guests, you know, we can sit down and talk. And... Yeah, but where's the sofa? Where's the table? Where's the fun? Do you know what hurt the most? I got soup served in a plastic bowl. There's a chicken parmesan slider that tasted like it was cooked three days ago. Who in the fuck would put a chicken parmesan slider together? There's things that don't go in sliders, and chicken parm is one of them. That was my idea. Be laughing as if it's funny. And you think, because you own the place, you can put that in a roll and sell it. I don't know what he's talking about. This place is not bad. So I think Gordon's comments were complete bullshit. 
you're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. I don't know what to say. When was the last time you stayed in the hotel? It's been a while. You cannot stand there and tell me that there's nothing wrong with this place when you don't even stay in it. You bought a building that was your dream, but it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I'm at the Keating Hotel in San Diego, and I've just met Eddie, the owner, who's completely oblivious to the fact that his supercar-inspired hotel is seriously underperforming. You're the owner, and you bought a building that was your dream. But it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I desperately want to help you. Only if you start identifying the problems. OK. Could you uh, send that young lady up to clear that dog shit out of there, please? Jesus. Trust me, Eddie is not used to honesty like that. Right now, he looks like a baby that's just had his lollipop stolen. How are you? Who is this guy? First thing he does, he lays right into me. The room service was terrible. Welcome to my world. He opened the bed up, and the sheets were all, like, wrinkled and... Most hotels have those giant ironing things that the sheets go through there. We don't have that. I tell Eddie the problems that we have. But it may be sometimes we tell people something and it goes one side to another. I was in shock. Maybe Gordon will get him to wake up. I don't know what to say. That was very embarrassing. After my meeting with Eddie, I'm ready to see how this so-called luxury hotel runs on a normal night. Hi there. How are you guys? Are you a... Uh... Luxury hey. lifestyle concierge. No, I am actually Sandra. I'm the GM of the hotel. And You're the general manager. Yes, oh, we haven't met. How long have you been here? I've been here for six years. Okay, wow. So you're here from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I got a lot to tell you. You got a lot to tell me. <laughs> yeah. I bet she does. Because the Keating seems to have more complaints than guests. Our room so is not very clean. There's yeah. a hair in the sheets as well. We turned down our bed, mm -hmm. and there's what appears to be a bunch of sand. The sand? What do you think of the rest? It's like a brothel. A bro oh. You've been in a brothel? I haven't. It's just oh, right. what I've heard. OK. Wow. I can confirm it is like a brothel. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me check on that right now. We've been waiting for 45 minutes. You know, if it's not up in 10 I'm minutes, just cancel sure. it, because we'll go to dinner, OK? OK. How can they make a guest wait so long for something that's not even cooked? The system for room service here is clearly not working. Taking the orders at the front desk, then pass them to the kitchen is madness. I've never seen anything like this before. Let's go through the kitchen together. OK. Weirdly, the hotel's restaurant, the Merc, is in a separate building around the corner. Can you believe that we're waiting 45 minutes for cheese board? I can't believe it, Seriously? but I'm not surprised. She looked pretty pissed, huh? She did look pretty pissed. They sounded pissed the three times they called as well. Wow. What is it? Is it cheese board? Yes. Uh, where's the fucking cheese? Is that it? That is it. How much is that? $16.99, I believe. You're kidding me. I can guarantee someone's going to complain about that. Hello. How are you, Gordon? Yeah, well, how are you? My name is Aaron, the right. manager. You're the manager. Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, Gordon. Um, you're the manager of the restaurant? Yes, yeah. sir. That cheese portion there is barely two little slithers of cheese. They waited 45 minutes for it. And it's like no one gives a shit. Oh, I definitely do now that you've told me this is the first time that I've heard of it. Why would they wait 45 minutes for something that's already... Uh, I, I think the process, unfortunately, is a little bit slow here. I think getting up the stairs uh, is a little bit of a challenge. Why don't you take the call in the kitchen? Oh, in the kitchen itself, we can take that call. It's definitely an option, but we've always... Discussed... Would you think that's faster? I think as the hotel takes it, it's just as fast as... So even though the customers are unhappy with the wait that they've had to endure, you don't want to do anything for them? I didn't know how long the customer was waiting until just now. Wow. OK. Manager. Fuck me. Aaron, the restaurant manager, isn't taking any responsibility. If he worked for me, he'd be long gone. How fucking weird. How would you rate him out of 10? Can we go into negatives? Aaron is the king of excuses as far as being able to kind of weasel his way out of things, but I'm not in charge of firing him. How are we doing over here, guys? No wonder the hotel is half empty. They can't even get the basics like room service and laundry right. Maybe Sandra, the GM, can tell me what the hell is going on Sandra. here. Right, we're having a chance yes, to uh, catch up. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you. So, all these issues with the laundry. Where's the laundry done? Let me show you. Please. Oh, here we are. So this is the laundry room. Wow. Bloody hell, you have got your work cut out. These are domestic. I know. These washing machines are designed for small families. 
Not a 35 bedroom hotel. Wow. No wonder they struggle. Your lifestyle concierge come in here throughout their day to do laundry and attend the front desk and take room service we, orders. We are the. I mean, this is crazy. It is insane. Absolutely it it crazy. is insane. I don't know how we do it sometimes. Who presses the sheets? We don't. We don't have equipment. So you don't press them? Yes. Can I show you where we are in the pillowcases? Yeah, so, Absolutely. Oh God, there's somewhere else. You seem to know all these problems, and you're the general manager. But if there's one person who can stop this, it's you. If the owner, well, yes, I can quit. I can leave to another hotel and go where everything is much better. It is hell to run this place. You're a general manager. Mm -hmm. Yet you're managing nothing. I spoke to the owner. I said this has to change. What's going on? Gordon is totally right with what he's saying, but is Eddie being so involved in everything? That's the problem. I have conversations with the owner about what works and what doesn't work in the restaurant. No matter how many times I say, you know what, we should not have a book as a menu, Eddie comes up with whatever he wants. But no one's taking responsibility. I pulled back my duvet, and the sheets were shocking. $800 a night to stay in something pretty mediocre. You should be ashamed. I am ashamed. I am ashamed. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Get down to the restaurants. Jesus. How are you doing? Table of one, please. How are you? Ooh. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. How are you? Very well, and yourself? Very well, thank you. And so are you. First name is My name is David. David. So, what do you do? I am actually the restaurant manager here. I thought I just met the restaurant manager, the little man. I'm the other restaurant manager. And the food, how would you rate the food out of 10? Six. Six. I wouldn't serve any of our dishes to my dog. Chef Brian's kind of given up. So much has been taken out of Brian's hands by Eddie that I don't think that he has the passion and the drive to be that great anymore. Starting off with chicken under a brick, what does that actually mean? It means it's drier than a bone. Amazing. Even the manager thinks the food's terrible here, and he's not embarrassed to tell me. And then the capitassi. Capitapi? Yeah, here we go. With chicken, uh, sun dried tomatoes, mushrooms. Oh. You like that one? No. Oh, shit, really? Uh, I'm still going to try yeah. it. So for dessert, I'll go for the chocolate pig. Um, it's a 10 inch uh, dessert pizza. Chocolate, strawberries, bacon. How can I resist that? Thank you, Ernest, indeed. Thank you. The table I'm ringing right now, just bring it as it comes, OK? Everything's under fire. Uh, right, what do we have here? This is the brick chicken. $21. $21. Brick chicken. Yeah, it looks like someone's just shat a brick. It's so dry. Yeah. I mean, really dry. That's actually better than usual. Really? Yeah. Chicken under a brick is where it should have stayed, because it should have never come out of the kitchen. Wow. Pardon my reaching. OK. This is the kavatapi and chicken. OK. Bland, chicken's dry, way too much rosemary, and just, it's Whoa. shit. At least I've saved room for dessert. What you have here is the chocolate pig. Oh. White and dark chocolate, strawberries, bacon. It's like we've had a crisis with the toilet paper department. Someone's wiped their ass with my dough. I mean, it's just. I've never seen anything so fucking unappetizing as a dessert in all my life. Absolutely. Bacon and chocolate pizza, OMFG. Yeah, you didn't like any of it. Not one thing. Fuck me. <laughs> Is the chef uh, off tonight? No, he's in the back. He's in the back. Is chef he cooking or? No. So he's here, but he's not cooking. Hmm. I would uh, really like to meet the uh, executive chef. Chef, Ryan Rutherford, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon. How are you? Uh, let's go somewhere out the Absolutely. Uh, line. I'm lost for words. I just, yeah. I don't know. I didn't even know where to start. But I'm, why wouldn't you cook for me? Why wouldn't you do that? It's not a question of me not cooking for you. It's, do you want to see what we're doing here and improve? Because I want this to improve. You've been here for how long? Five years. Five years. But you've been cooking for 30 years? 33 years. 33 years. 
I didn't see you on the line. I didn't see you taste anything. I didn't even see you inspire anybody. This position is killing me in my soul. I've just been doing everything that Eddie wanted. We have too large a menu for the amount of business we do. So if I have 120 items on the menu and we do 50 people a night, how much of this am I able to prep on a regular basis to have quality? But you're the executive chef on the menu. Yes, I am. How can you let that food go out with your name above it? Um, you can't just give up and almost, you know, abandon ship before it's sunk. I'm at the end of my road. You're toast. I'm tired. But you're, you're, you're an experienced guy. Are you OK? Look at me, look at me. Are you OK? Are you on medication? No. Excuse me, can you get me some uh, water, please? Quickly. Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. Christ. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus. Jesus Christ. What happened? The chef's on the floor. Oh, shit. You OK? Call 911. Jesus Christ. Chef just fell, collapsed. Can I have some water, please, and a cold cloth? Urgently. Let's try to stay alert. A chair, please. A chair. Jesus Christ. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus. Come here. Jesus Christ. Come on, come on. Chef's on the floor. Jesus Christ. Sir. Chef just fell, collapsed. Let's try and stay alert. Drink some water. No job is worth this, let me tell you. I was with the gentleman we were just standing talking, and unfortunately, he just flaps and banged his head on the back here. I am really pissed off at Gordon. He's stressing everybody out. Everyone seems to be at their boiling point. Has he been stressed out for long? I mean, this put a lot of stress on all of us. What, me being here? Yeah. But do not dare fucking go anywhere near that I put him in that ambulance. Got it. Let me tell you something. 150 items on a fucking menu the size of a fucking shoebox. Can send that man to an early grave, let me tell you. It's like he's a dead man walking. Yeah. What he tried to tell me in a five minute conversation is that you've overburdened him because he does whatever you want. You pay his salary, but you're not behind that line. You have no catering experience, you haven't spent a day in a kitchen. I've never seen anything so fragmented. Okay. It's like you're a little magpie, a little spoiled fucking magpie that's going around picking up little bits of glitter and running back and getting your army to expedite it for you. All that matters right now is that that guy wakes up tomorrow feeling better. Enough is enough for one day. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Good night. For me, the most important thing is that he's OK, but that guy has the world on his shoulders, and tonight proved that. What a day yesterday. The good news is that Brian's out of hospital. And they said it was dehydration and anxiety. So I'm going to shoot over to his house, keep the cameras outside, and hopefully have a chat with him. How are you, sir? Come on in. I'm so glad to see you. You know that. I'm telling you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling well. <laughs> We've got immense troubles at the hotel. Mm -hmm. You cannot continue driving yourself into the ground like that. Eddie he takes advantage of my good nature. Do you feel well enough to come back to the restaurant today? Yeah. Good. Let's get you back in there. And trust me, this time, it's on your terms, not Eddie's. Definitely. Good to see you. The restaurant is the beating heart of any good hotel. So the Keating has no chance without Chef Brian. Thankfully, just a couple of hours after I saw him, Brian is back at the hotel. After going to the hospital, I believe that Gordon is totally in my corner, saying, get back in there. Get it. You, you got this guy. Now it's time to get the whole staff together to figure out 
how to get this hotel back on track. Thank you all for uh, meeting me. Am I happy to see you or what? How are you feeling, more importantly? I am feeling very good. Brilliant. Welcome back. Thank you. Very yeah. good. Let's get everything out on the table, because life's too short to fester. I'm here to help. I just want to hear it from you guys. What's wrong with the Keaton? The resources. It's the resources. I tell Eddie all the time, Eddie, I can't do my job. Your front reception desk should not be doing laundry, let me tell you that. The big concern I have is the room service. How on earth do we get ourselves in that mess? As a food and beverage manager, yeah, tell me why it's going via the reception. It's determined by, you know, Eddie. Oh, my God, don't give me that. You're not the owner of the place. I tell you what I want, and you guys need to implement it. Why is the menu so big? Because Eddie comes up with ideas. I, Eddie sees things. Eddie has a lot of friends that come in that would like to see more items on the menu. Yeah. If I go see something I like from somewhere else, I tell you guys to implement it. But you're not a chef. He is. And he needs his identity, and he needs his voice. I do know Brian doesn't like to say no to me. You have a general manager, you have a head chef, executive chef, you have a front desk manager, you shouldn't get involved. And I give them ideas, you know, because I have a vision here and I give them the ideas. No. No. I cannot work with you if you're like this. We have the key players. That own, there's one little problem we have. And unfortunately, it's, it's you at this point. Tell me, who's the most important person at the Keating? Who is it? Eddie Bryan, yeah? The most important person out of the Keating. Sandra, who is it? I, I gotta say, it's Eddie. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe it would be Eddie. Eddie. Sandra. No. No. The most important person at the Keating is the guest. And I think it's all been forgotten about. And it's more about keeping you, Eddie, happy. We have to focus on the guest. I'm here to put this place right. Understand that. Eddie and Sandra, uh, just come with me. If Eddie won't listen to me, and he won't listen to his staff, maybe he'll listen to the people who could pay the bills around here. Eddie, up until now, this hotel has always been about you, your dream, your vision. Now, it's about the guests. I want you to meet some very important people. I'm just really worried right now. I have no idea what Gordon has in the room. Hello. Hey. How are you? I see uh, guests that have been staying at the Keating over the last 24 to 48 hours. Oh, no. When I see all those guests there, I want to run away right now. I wanted to give you a unique opportunity to hear some very, and I mean very, valuable feedback. I've also stayed here, um, and I am frustrated, but I'm here to get this place back on the map. Give me a little insights, please. What do you think of this luxury hotel? Madam, what would you? I walked into the room and it smelled horrible. There was the rest of the jacuzzi, no water. Some of the features in the room were just lower quality, like the plastic looked a little bit cheap and old, so it doesn't feel comfortable. Madam, okay. please. I just feel like this place was designed kind of form over function. It was just kind of weird. Where is one supposed to sit and eat breakfast in their room? My husband had to stand up this morning to have his breakfast while I took the only chair and sat at the desk. I'm sorry. Our, our room service was, um, we ordered a couple of the small pizzas, and they essentially looked like microwave pizzas. And then the order was wrong, so we called the correct. They eventually you know, brought up what we actually ordered. And then in the morning, they charged us for both. Wow, I'm so sorry. Anybody else? There was some really high-end stuff, and then at the same time, there was just simple amenities that were skipped. Well, are you saying there's better at the same price out there? Yeah. Eddie, your baby, your vision. Um, on the back of that feedback? No, I appreciate the feedback. I have one question for you all. Who would return here? Let's do a show of hands. Who would come back to the Keating? Wow. Not one person. Gordon's comment about it's not what I want, it's what the guests want. Wow. I'm starting to realize that some of the things he's saying actually are true. I really apologize, and I am looking forward to having you guys in the future. I can tell you will have a different experience. Eddie and Sandra, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but this is, for me, critical feedback, and it's only going to get better.
The feedback from the customers was good. I'm realizing there's more issues than I thought we had. And just being here over the past couple days, I'm seeing what they are. I think we can definitely fix them and streamline them so the place works a lot more efficiently and all the guests are happy. Thank you, I appreciate it. Eddie is starting to see how much things have to change for this place to succeed. But for the hotel to have a fighting chance of turning a profit, I've got to find a way to reignite Chef Brian's love of cooking. Let's show the gang what we can do. Yeah. I don't have much passion here anymore. I'm hoping that, that, that Gordon being here will nurse it back. And right first was the uh, roasted beet and burrata salad. They've just been seasoned with a little touch of salt, pepper, and then finished in a little hazelnut vinaigrette. Scallops. I like serving scallops with a nice sear. So, a touch of salt, pepper, a little bit of vinaigrette. I've just made it sort of citrusy. Good. Yeah. I love it when you get excited like that. See that energy coming back. I absolutely love it. I just have a little taste. Mm. Mm. Are you okay, Brian? You're, you're killing me. <laughs> there's, there's two things on the plate. Oh, oh, there's, got the okay. scallops and the onion purees. When I'm on the line with Gordon, the energy level just pops up, and now I'm, you know, I'm standing a little taller, and it's exciting. Nice, happy. Yeah, good. It's so nice to see you smiling, you know that. Gordon kind of unlocked the chains that I had allowed to be put on. I'm with you every step of the way, but you need a voice in here, and your voice is on that plate. Let it scream. I love Eddie, but I have to be able to just say, this is not going to work. This is not to the benefit of the hotel, the guests, the restaurant, or anything. You can do it, and I know you can do it. I needed this to remember what I used to do and that, that there's no limit to what I can do in the future. Brian and Eddie are both making great strides. And tonight, my design team will move in and try to get this hotel out of the pits. But first, there's something I've just got to try. I've got a 25 grand bar, so I might as well use it. It's been a challenging week at the Keating Hotel, a place that was all style and no substance. But its owner, Eddie, has finally turned a corner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Good. Very good. Excellent. It's time to show him and his staff how my design team have transformed the Keating into a place people will actually want to stay. OK, good. Let's be honest, the Keating is a hotel with huge potential, right? Yes. But you need to focus your attention and energy to the guests that are staying here. Yeah? Come with me. Let me show you the Keating. Let's go. Come in. Welcome. Wow. Come wow. in. That is great. Oh, my god. It's all opened up. Wow. There's no more dominant red. Read carefully all those wonderful configurations of your hands. Welcome to the Keating. It's just so beautiful. Isn't it? It's, it's just such an emotional experience. You all have a hand in helping the guests feel welcome. It's amazing. You disappointed the red is gone? No. No? No. It's a brand new, warm, inviting entrance to a hotel. Awesome. Ready to see more? Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Come into my suite. Oh, my God. Wow. So much nice. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. 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 <laughs> wow. I am definitely blown away. Wow. Wow. Oh Welcome to what I think is a sophisticated, comfortable, modern suite. Yeah? Let's start off with that jacuzzi. If guess would like to take a bath. Pull the curtains, they have a choice. That's how you embody luxury. The sofas, you can sit down, you can watch TV three meters away from the screen. <laughs> Brian, you're going quiet on me again, jeez. We thought we were sleek and cool, mm. and now it's beautiful, it feels welcoming. Come through the bedroom, please. 
I really like the concept of the made over suite. Now it screams the guests. You get stuck in a perspective sometimes, and you need to take a step back and have someone you know, come in and show you, and I think that's what Gordon has done. It's amazing. Now, something really important. I've organized a free trial period from a local linen company. Use it to your advantage. That means the front desk team doesn't need to waste time doing laundry. You've got more time to focus on the guests. <laughs> and Sandra, you are a GM. You're not a laundry assistant. The lifestyle concierge. We don't have to worry about laundry. So I am happy. There's more. Let's go. Are right, excited? Yes. Come through. We have refreshed the menu, OK? <laughs> oh, my God! Wow. <gasps> I've worked with Chef Brian to devise a short new menu that will play to his strengths. First impressions visually. It's very vibrant. The presentation's amazing. And the good news is, two-thirds of the menu's gone. Chef, what do you think? I think that this allows me to speak to the guest. And Aaron, I want you, as the food and beverage manager, to take responsibility of room service. Own it. And no plastic containers. I think now we have the proper execution, the proper understanding of the menu with limited yeah. small items. We definitely can execute it a lot quicker, and now I feel a lot more comfortable. And that, for me, is great news, because it means the front desk is no longer looking after room service or do laundry. They can Thank concentrate you. on looking after the guests. Yes. There's one more change we need to do. You've been wearing a red chef jacket for far too long. You deserve a white one, let me tell you. Put that on. Thank you. Enjoy it. I certainly and... will. I'm feeling great. I'm no longer Eddie's chef in the red jacket. I'm the chef of the Merc Bistro in white. It's not Eddie's favorite color, but it is a proper chef's jacket. You perform like one, you deserve it. Make it yours. Thank you, Gordon. Well done. This is the kind of energy you want to see every day. So you know what? As long as they're doing their jobs, I have no problem with them saying no to me anymore. Big night tonight, and it's going to be a packed restaurant. You've got to remember you are all Team Keating. I know you can do it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Guests are arriving for the relaunch of the Keating Hotel. And the first impressions are very positive. It's really nice. You like it? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. At long last, the front desk can focus on welcoming guests. How are you? Welcome. I'm Cindy. Pleasure to meet you. And the hotel's new white lobby is a great improvement. Isn't this all red? And before it looked like a bus station, now it looks like a hotel. It looks mm -hmm. much more inviting. At the restaurant, Aaron is finally stepping up and taking a new hands-on approach to room service and not a plastic container in sight. Mr. Hanks, right? Yeah. Excellent. We got room service right, over here yes. for you. The simplified menu has brought Brian back to life. I want the most gorgeous plates in the world coming up in this window. That's good news for the diners. So very tender. It's like, I don't even need this knife. This is a joint where you don't need ketchup, because it's perfectly seasoned. And for the future of Eddie and the Keating Hotel. Keep it going. That's amazing. It's perfect. If I had one thing to say to Gordon right now, it's just, thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's our last ticket out. I've been really lost here, and you've woken me up. Great job. New day, new day and reminded me of who I am. <sighs> this place was all about Eddie's dream of what a hotel should be like. But he forgot the most important person, the guest. I'm just hoping that Eddie can trust his staff and let them work as a team, because this is a place I'd love to come back to. OK. Right, Sandra. You are a great general manager. Don't stop being one, OK? Gordon, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm Good proud to be the general manager of the Keaton Hotel. Give me a hug. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I well done. Seriously, you can do the food and beverage. You can handle the room service easily. And my god, I mean, you bounce back from the dead. <laughs> Let me tell you. Literally. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Make it yours. Oh, it OK, well done. And do not change that jacket. OK, white suits you. You know that. <laughs> and let your team run your business, OK? I think this experience with Gordon was life-changing for everyone here. What you did to get the team back together, I mean, I'm telling you, no one could have done. 
but this place is on the road. And good luck. I can't wait to come back. It's one of those experiences you'll never forget. Good job, guys. Sometimes no. you have to trust me. No. 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 Over on Film 4, suffering with Fragile X Syndrome, one man's wish to meet Metallica's drummers Lars Ulrich might just get realised in docu-film Mission to Lars. But next here on Channel 4, the innovative and completely compelling blackout. The consequences of a modern-day Britain without power in a couple of minutes. On the potato, do potato.